The views expressed herein reflect the views of the Whistler Agency as of the date of publication. These views may change as conditions change. The views expressed herein are not intended and should not be construed as investment advice, and they do not address any individual's specific situation. Welcome to Whistler While You Retire with Tim Whistler from the Whistler Agency. Here you will learn how Tim helps clients avoid taking unnecessary risks in retirement. With a fiduciary responsibility, Tim's mission is to help retirees and soon-to-be retirees create a greater sense of confidence about their retirement plan. Now, on to the show. Welcome to the Whistler While You Retire podcast with Tim Whistler of the Whistler Agency. I'm Patrice Sikora. In this episode, Tim tells us about a hero of his. It's zero. Tim, Tim, help me here because zero is nothing. What do you mean by zero being your hero? Well, Patrice, this episode is for the person who is already in retirement or nearing retirement and can recall the pain, maybe the anxiety and the frustration of dealing with a volatile market. Mm Mm-hmm. Does, does 2000 or 2008 ring a bell for a lot of people? Oh, hello. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Those that, you know, that was a bear market, which occurs when prices in a market decline by more than 20%. And you know, that'll provide a buying opportunity for those who are in the accumulation phase of life. But when you're relying on accounts for income needed to fund your retirement, the last thing you want to see is the account values to decrease due to market losses. This is so true. Now, you said accumulation phase of life. What, what is that? So I like to explain this by using the analogy of mountain climbing. Now, I'm not a mountain climber, okay? But this analogy, I think, is relative for, for what we're looking at. You know, mountain climbing involves the ascent and the descent. So in life, reaching the mountaintop is the pinnacle. It's the ultimate goal, and that is retirement. So... As we ascend the mountain, as we climb the mountain, we are in the accumulation phase. So this is where our primary focus is simply to accumulate assets to save and build wealth. So we can use 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs, and other assets that accumulate wealth. And inside of those vehicles, we are using holdings like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, etc. And we all know that ROI, or return on investment, is crucial. And during the accumulation phase, during the time when we're focused on accumulating as much asset value as we can, we are busy. I mean, what else are we doing in this time of life? Mm -hmm. We're we're doing things like raising a family. We're putting braces on the kids. We're saving for college. We're paying down a mortgage. We're spending a fortune on auto insurance when we have teenage drivers. I've got two of them in my house and goodness. Oh, bless you. (laughs) I hate when that bill shows up, you know? (laughs) You know, we're saving for weddings. We're setting up 529 college savings plans, maybe for grandkids, or even perhaps we're spending time caring for mom or dad because they're not in good health and they can't be alone. Life is busy. And as we all know, it usually happens without our permission. So quite often saving for retirement becomes a luxury rather than a priority or an opportunity. So, you know, we do the best we can while we can. So fast forwards decades later. So we've reached the mountaintop and now we get to retire so we can enjoy the golden years. So it's now time to descend the mountain. And in doing so, we transition into the second phase. This is what is known as the distribution phase. This is the time of life in which we are making withdrawals or distributions from the assets that we accumulated during our working years. So it's here when we're taking distributions from these assets because we need income to fund our retirement plan. And people often need distributions from their retirement accounts to maybe complement the income they're receiving from social security or even a pension. This phase of life is usually pretty exciting, but it will certainly present many challenges that were not an issue during our working years. So for example, market volatility is one of the five biggest risks in retirement. It wasn't necessarily an issue when we were accumulating assets because we have time to recover if the market turns volatile. Plus, we can take advantage of the lower values to purchase more assets when they're quote unquote on sale. Mm -hmm. But now we reside in the distribution phase and with market volatility being one of the five biggest risks in retirement, it's critical to to figure out how we can manage that volatility. And we'll discuss the other risk in retirement in in different episodes. 
So while we can't accurately predict the major movements of the markets, we can certainly manage the level of exposure for the assets. And it's during this time that the ROI must also make a transition. So during the distribution phase, your ROI should no longer really be focused on return on investment, but rather on the reliability of income. Uh -huh. All right, so to recap here, during our accumulation years when we're going up the mountain, we have the return on investment. And yep. when we're coming down the mountain during our distribution years, it's the reliability of income that is so important. Exactly. Because retirement is not about the assets that you own. It's about income because the assets you possess don't fund your retirement plan. So for example, your house could be one of the biggest assets you own. And it's a wonderful thing to have a mortgage, to not have a mortgage payment in retirement, right? It's a wonderful thing to have that mortgage paid mm -hmm. off and, and not have a payment on it. But unless you're renting out maybe the basement or an apartment, your house is not generating income for you. So it's the income from the assets that are needed to fund our retirement plan. And here is where zero can be your hero. Okay. So and this is how I love to explain this. This Good. is a true story. And this is a story about Judy. And we are in the summer of 2006. And this story is told by an author who knows this advisor in the story. And Judy was a 70-year-old stock market veteran who was very content with her portfolio because it had recovered nicely from the, from the 2000 dot-com crash. But over coffee, Judy's best friend was telling her about her advisor and how he specializes in protecting clients' money from loss. So this friend of Judy had expressed concern about what would happen to Judy's account should another correction occur, just like they had experienced in 2000. And she reminds her friend Judy, she goes, Judy, we're not really getting any younger and it may take a long time to recover from another market dip. So Judy agreed to meet Dave, this, her best friend's advisor. Mm -hmm. So again, she was kind of doing this more to appease her friend really than to make any changes to her investments. So the day of the meeting with Dave had arrived and standing at barely five feet tall and with her feisty, confident personality, <laughs> she promptly informs Dave of her experience of investing in the market. She told him of the conversation she had had with her best friend who was again, one of his clients. But she said, despite her comfort level of investing, she did share with him that she was growing tired of having to watch the market on a daily basis as she liked to spend more time maybe on some other activities. So Dave asked Judy, Judy, if I could show you a way that will give you some time freedom while also protecting your account from losses, would you take a look? Judy said, sure. So he introduced her to the strategy, explaining the features, the benefits, the pros and the cons. And she was interested to see how it would pertain to her portfolio. So they scheduled a second meeting for the following week. So during this week, Dave put together a plan to assist Judy with a large portion of her IRA money. So a week later, Judy and Dave meet, and he showed her how the strategy would apply to her account. Her funds would be completely protected from any stock market volatility while also providing potential for market-like returns. So in other words, Judy's account would have the opportunity to earn some of the up while also being completely protected from the down. None of the down. None of the down, completely protected. Mm -hmm. So Judy liked the plan. So, so they set it up for her IRA. So we fast forward now 12 months. We are now in the summer of 2007. This is time for Judy's first review. So Dave's got the statements in hand and he is excited for this meeting to share it with her because her account was up. So she walks in and Judy, I'm so glad to see you. What a great year we had. Your account went up 17%. Nice. Judy's <laughs> yeah. Judy's res exactly. I mean, it's a great thing. Here's Judy's response. Yeah, I saw that in the statement. That's that's good. Dave was surprised and he thought, well, maybe she didn't hear me right. No, wait, Judy. Not 7%, but 17%, Dave says. Judy says, yeah, I, I know that's fine. The market did 24 and I did 17. <laughs> so I guess that's good. <laughs> so Dave reminds her again. Now, Judy, again, this is not the stock market. This is unlike something you've been used to. This is a fixed product that protects the account value against loss while also offering opportunity for growth. And Judy says, Dave, I hate to break this to you, but at my age, you're just not going to get me to do cartwheels. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the meeting ends shortly thereafter. And Dave is just, I mean, simply just stunned by Judy's somewhat lack of excitement over a 17% increase to her account. So now we fast forward another 12 months. Now, I think we all remember what was happening in the summer of 2008. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> we sure do. We are in the midst of the market spiral due to the mortgage bubble that had burst mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter of 07. Mm -hmm. 
So because the markets had lost value, a lot, account, a lot of value, a lot of value, <laughs> tremendously, a huge amount wiped out. I think the 401ks became what known as 201ks, yeah, something, something like, like that. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so because Judy's account was inside of this fixed product, she had a 0% return on the statement. So because of that, Dave wasn't really sure how this review was going to go compared to how it went last time. The day of the meeting had arrived and in walked Judy, but she wasn't empty handed. She walks in carrying a gigantic plate of full of warm homemade brownies. Dave couldn't believe his eyes. Uh -huh. She sets down the plate. She walks right up to Dave, who stands about 6'3", wraps her arms around his waist and gives him a huge hug. And as she lets go and he looked down at her, he noticed tears in Judy's eyes. And she says... Dave, you really have no idea how grateful I am, am to have known you over this last year. Wow. And Dave says, okay, hold on a second, Judy. Last year, you got a 17% return and I could barely get a smile from you. This year, you get a big zero, but you give me brownies and a hug? <laughs> <laughs> and Judy says, Dave, that's right. I've been talking to my friends, my neighbors, my family. All of them have lost money these last few months and some of them have, lo have lost a lot of money, but I haven't lost a dime. And not only that, I still have the 17% return in my account from the previous year. One of the smartest things I've ever done in my life was to listen to my friend who told me to come and see you. And by the way, she got a plate of brownies too. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This is also one of those times when you think to yourself, should I be listening to my neighbors? Should I be listening to my friends? <laughs> in this right. case, Judy did the right thing. She sure did. Yep. And that story is published in a book that I give out to people. I give out to people who just like Judy want to enjoy their time in retirement rather than maybe babysitting the market every day, just like Judy expressed. She was content, but maybe she, you know, she was just kind of starting to get tired of it taking so much of her time, having to watch something that could turn negative very, very quickly. So in a get acquainted meeting with my prospective clients, and when I'm get, just for, first getting to know people, I'm asking them all kinds of questions. I mean, so I can learn a little bit more about them, their family, and also what they want to accomplish in retirement. And, and I absolutely love the responses that I get when I ask them to describe for me what they want to do with their time now that they are no longer working full time. And I've had responses like spend time with the grandkids, volunteer, wake up when I'm done sleeping. I love that one. You know, no, not having to wake up to an alarm <laughs> clock, you know, travel, you know, golf, starting a new hobby, all sorts of things like that. But, you know, I've never had anyone yet today tell me that they want to spend their time to watch the stock market on a daily basis. No. But yet so many have to do that because they've not been informed about this same strategy that Judy and my clients can utilize in their retirement plan. And as I stated earlier, one of the most devastating risks in retirement is market volatility. And again, we can't control it, but we can control how it affects our assets. I tell people you've worked too hard for too long to expose your hard-earned savings to an unexpected and devastating market loss that can literally wipe away 10, 20, 30% or more of your account value. But when you use a strategy like that, what choice do you have but to watch its performance every single day? Mm. You know, and not only are you spending precious time watching something you can't control, you also expose your mental well being. So, for example, when the markets dip one day and then the second day and then another day, what emotions are we now feeling? Here comes the anxiety. And then here comes the high blood pressure. Now comes worry. Here come the sleepless nights. And we all know that when we lack sleep, we become a little bit more edgy, a little bit more impatient than normal. And we all know that with the negative emotions come negative responses, maybe to your spouse, to your kids, your grandkids, your overall outlook on life. But, you know, why go through all of that just to hope for the opportunity of some type of a positive return? I just question if the risk is worth it. And Earlier, I mentioned the ROI and the two phases of life. And, and you remember again, Patrice, the ROI and what we're supposed to focus on when we're retired. What's that ROI again? That's the reliability of income. You got it. That's yes. right. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, you know, to replace the worry, the fear, the anxiety that comes from having to watch an account as we hope for some type of growth, the strategy where zero is your hero is life changing. And I also like where you say, Yes, it's the power of zero, but it's winning by not losing. Exactly. That's what it's, I think people could, should really focus on. You're winning because you're not losing. That's absolutely correct. That's where the zero really truly becomes a hero. And, and 
the majority of the clients that I work with relate to the story of Judy. I have conducted numerous annual reviews with clients, just like that second review Judy had with Dave, where my clients come in, we sit down, and that statement shows a zero, just like what Judy showed. And the, the really cool thing, I too have received brownies and cookies and the occasional hug, That's it, which is great yeah. because we have everything we had in that account from the previous year, despite the negative performance of that index or market, whatever we were in. And the beautiful thing about that situation is that these same clients have experienced reviews the following year or following two years with positive growth being credited to their account from a strong market performance or a rebound from the right. following, you know, in the following year or two. That's why I'm I'm constantly promoting a message that I've entitled, it's not what you earn, it's what you keep. Mm -hmm. You know, and here's what I mean by that. So if the market has had a negative performance since the last review, we celebrate the zero. The zero is our hero because not one dime was lost, no matter how significant that negative market performance was. And when the market has had a positive performance that since that last review, we often see a positive return added to the account value. Mm -hmm. And not only that, we now know that the new account value will be there again next year, should the market decide to go negative again for the next 12 months. You know, and I, That's right. I see this, yeah. you got it. I, I see this firsthand with my dad because he's using the same strategy on two separate accounts in his portfolio. So you really should have a strategy in place that will provide safety to your principal and opportunity for growth on the same dollar at the same time. Rather like a ladder, you're always going up. You may have to stand on the same rung one yep. year or so, but you'll be climbing. You don't have to take that rung down. Exactly. That's exactly right. You had mentioned the importance of reliability of income in retirement, the distribution phase, but you also mentioned that retirement is all about income and not about assets. Speaking of the house, for instance. Yep. But if income is derived from our assets, we have to really pay attention to protecting them, don't we? We sure do. That, that's absolutely critical. And that's why I always really try to stress the transition of the new ROI, going from focusing on a return on investments now to the reliability of income. Because think of what can happen if we retire when we're in a volatile market. Most of us have heard and read all about average annual returns of an investment. That's kind of what our due diligence is as investors. We look at something like, oh, what's the average annual return? Well, it's whatever percentage it is. The reports will look back over a certain period of time, let's say for 10 years, and the annual performance of those 10 years is converted into an average. But what happens is the average annual return can be far different from an actual return, especially when we're in that distribution phase and we're taking withdrawals out of that account for income. And the idea of seeing that balance lose value can be painful. Yeah. And in, in addition to that, what people really, you know, what few people realize, I should say, is what type of a return is required to break even. So here's a very simple mathematical example. And I, and I love to share this when I'm talking one on one or talking to you like this on a podcast or even when we're doing a seminar. So if we have $100 in an account and it goes down by 10%, how much do we lose? We lost 10 bucks, right? So we now have $90 in our account. But what return is necessary to get us back to $100? Is it just simply 10% back up? No. It, we, we actually, if we lose 10% of an account, we actually need 11% return just to break even. And the more we lose, the more of a return we need to break even. So for example, if our account loses 20%, we need 25 to break even. And it gets worse. If we lose 30, we need 43% just to break even. So if, oh it, if a mar market value goes down by 20%, man, it's got to do even better just to get it back where we were before the loss occurred. Right. We call this the dark side of compound interest. I'd love to have James Earl Jones on my speed dial <laughs> <laughs> and have him say, this is the dark side of compound interest. Mm -hmm. So when we're tying all this together, there actually does exist a strategy where we are able to replace a negative with a simple zero. How? <laughs> how, how, how? <laughs> so this is how I kind of lead this in. I say, this is the time where scheduling a phone call or sending me an email and requesting that we schedule what I call a get acquainted conversation. Because my practice is considered to be essential during this crazy COVID time, 
I am able to meet with people based upon their level of comfort. So if, you know, folks are more comfortable in exercising social distancing, we can have a virtual meeting over the phone or, or through a webcam on a PC. But if they're okay with having an in-person meeting, we can certainly schedule a time to visit and meet at their kitchen table and get acquainted. And what do you do during these meetings? Well, during the get acquainted meeting, this is where they can ask all kinds of questions to me to learn more about me, my practice, my philosophy. And in turn, this is where I get a chance to learn a little bit more about them, their family, what retirement means to them, maybe what some of their fears are, what some of their goals are. I always like, like to ask questions about what assets are we going to be used for, for you know, retirement? Are, are any of them going to be needed for income? Mm -hmm. Are some of these assets, you know, live on? Or are they going to be leave on? You know, what type of legacy are we planning? So it, it just gives us an opportunity to really learn a little bit more about each other. And then at that conclusion of that meeting, if we both feel that we've got a good foundation to start, then we would schedule the second meeting where we would begin to discuss the details and build a blueprint for the retirement. And this is where I can show them how zero can be their hero if it's a good fit for their plan. So they don't have to make any decisions in that first meeting. It's just to get to know you and you to get to know them. Absolutely. And, and then like, like I said, once, once we've established a good foundation, say, hey, let's start digging into the weeds a little bit. Let's get, get into the details. It's even at that second meeting where I tell people, this is the first time you have seen this. This is the first time you've seen our initial conversation for building a game plan. You're also not making a decision today. All we're simply doing is just taking, like you said earlier, Patrice, one step up the ladder, literally in building a game plan. So that's that second meeting in which I can kind of show them and say, hey, you may have read, you know, if, if I ever got a copy of that book and they're interested in reading about it, I'll give them a copy of that book that tells them about that story of Judy. In fact, that's the one that I kind of tell them. The, the book is not real long. It's not, it's not real hard to read. But chapter two of the book is that story of Judy. And I say, hey, look, just read chapter two and let's get together again next week. And, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on what you read about Judy. And then we kind of build it from there. So then if they're like, yeah, that sounds really good. How does that work? I've not heard of this before. Show me how this works. And that's the second meeting, kind of what I call a discovery meeting. Now where I'm kind of showing them what many of my other clients have discovered and saying, hey, if we want to reallocate a portion of an IRA or non-qualified funds, whatever we've got, and move it away from something that exposes them to market volatility into something where zero can be their hero, that's the time that I introduce that to them at that second meeting. So they don't have to go all into this. They can do a little bit here and a little bit there? Absolutely. Because again, you know, when I try to build a retirement plan for clients, I take the approach from a holistic approach. I like to tell people, Every one of your accounts should have purpose. This get account over here needs to be simply nothing but emergency funds. It's not, it's not meant to accumulate growth. It's not meant to be used for vacation money. It's simply there when life happens without your permission and you need extra money to maybe repair the roof or replace a car, whatever the case may be. Then this account here, maybe we can be a little bit more per se aggressive with it. Maybe there is no floor. Maybe there is no zero in this one. So we can maybe, you know, manage the ups as well as manage the downs, but maybe it gives us a little bit of that thrill of saying, hey, you know, the market's doing really well or the market's down. Let's, let's put some more money into that. That's fine. That bucket can be there. But as I said earlier, the strategy that really makes the most sense for somebody who's going to be building retirement income from a large asset, zero is the hero. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. We have to protect that account from downside because we know patrice you and i know we've been doing this long enough to know market volatility can come you know on, on a notice i mean who would have thought at the beginning of this year where we were at where the mark where the markets were at where the economy was going where we'd be at right now and this is where it's very very important for us to to be able to set up those accounts protect them and give that client the opportunity to also claim zero to be their hero and tim how do they get a hold of you well, they can reach me a couple different ways. The phone number here to my office is 309-291-0491. My email address is tim at thewhistleragency.com. Now there's no T in Whistler. So unlike the mountains and the, and the famous painting of Whistler's mother, there's no T in my last name. So <laughs> right. it's, it's just W-H-I-S-L-E-R. So it's tim at thewhistleragency.com. And they can also certainly go visit my website and learn a little bit more, more about me and schedule an appointment at my website, which is thewhistleragency.com. And this is Tim Zero is my hero, Whistler of the Whistler Agency. <laughs> to subscribe to all of Tim's Whistler While You Retire podcasts, just tap the subscribe button on this page. You can also share with the share button. I'm Patrice Sikora, and let's talk again later.
Thank you for listening to Whistler While You Retire. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of the Whistler Agency. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Investment advisory and financial planning services offered through Simplicity Wealth LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Insurance, consulting, and education services offered through the Whistler Agency. The Whistler Agency is a separate and unaffiliated entity from Simplicity Wealth LLC. All characters in this podcast are for illustrative purposes. Your actual experience may vary. Guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Fixed index annuities are designed to meet long-term needs for retirement income and they provide guarantees against the loss of principal and credited interest and offer the reassurance of a death benefit for your beneficiaries. Although an external index or indexes may affect contract values, the contract does not directly participate in any stock or equity investments.